something wrong. Why should today be any different? Hi, everybody, and welcome to Sask Music's Indigenous History Month interview series. I'm so honored to be joined today by Donnie Peranto. Donnie, how's it going? Good, you? So good. Excited to talk to you. I'm excited. I'm, I'm excited to do this. It's going to be fun. So, Donnie, I have to start with this because we're both from uh, Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, beautiful Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. What was it like growing up as a young musician in somewhere like Prince Albert, Saskatchewan? I'll, I'll tell you what, we were lucky. We were very lucky when, when I was growing up. Uh, so many different artists and influences uh, in the music industry, like uh, we're right up to Brian Sklar. Uh, there's a group that goes way, way back even before Brian. The Cotton Pickers were from here. And I can remember back during that era where the uh, the Cotton Pickers, they used to play this place always. It was, uh, I think, out at Emma Lake or Christopher Lake called Bell's Beach. And uh, they, they played there all the time and, and they were famous. Like usually back, I can remember when I was a kid, when you had an album and all of a sudden, and those, those, those records and you had that, and you'd look at the picture on there, automatically you think that person's famous, that, 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 that person's famous, you know? And then when you'd see them and just, just realize they're regular people, you know, and that, but that was my attitude ever since I started, you know, you know growing up and listening to music and learning fiddle at the age of 14, and uh, I go far back where uh, it wasn't cassette tapes, folks. It was eight track tapes. Try to learn a fiddle tune on an eight track tape. Try that one up. <laughs> Let me see how determined you'd be if you would really want to learn a fiddle tune on an eight track tape. There you go. But awesome. Back I go. And, but I love it. And I was just very fortunate, you guys, uh, for having people like Brian Sklar, uh, Freddie Pelche, Rod Jansen, who, who I grew up around here playing with, Randall Curry. Uh, you know, just there's so many musicians that were from this small little town, small little city, and just just in, in that that genre of music. To uh, your grandpa, LJ, you know, it was what was a huge part of it. But I can remember all of them back in the day when we'd always. I was that young kid going to the country north show and going to watch, and I couldn't wait for that opportunity. Man, I want to get up there and play. I want to be able to do that someday. And then when my day came, and it was great. It was great. It was just, you know, and now it's nice. And I see younger people like yourself getting out there and getting your name out there a lot more and kudos. Just, uh, I encourage everybody go live your dream, man. It's uh music industry to me is not a competition. You should applaud people when they're doing good because they're, they're, they're doing what, what, what you did. And the way I look at it, I had my kick at the cat and I'm still doing it. And I'm very fortunate to do what I do still to this day but I encourage everybody to get out there and live your dream, man. Enjoy it. Donnie, so many um, young musicians in Saskatchewan and, and all over uh, look up to you because um, you, you did it, man. You went out there and you uh, were in Nashville and um, playing on big records and touring all over. Um, what advice do you have to those young musicians that, you know, they want to take their careers out of their hometowns, out of Saskatchewan and beyond? Well, you know, honestly, the only there's only one person that will stop you from doing it and you need to take a good look in the mirror that's the person that will stop you when you sit back and you don't believe in yourself number one you have to have that dream you have to believe you can do it is number two but then be willing to make the sacrifice and the sacrifice may mean you got to turn around and say goodbye to your town say goodbye to your city your family your friends and it's scary when you're out there on your own and you never know if you're going to make it or not and you could fail, but who cares? At least you're trying. Get out there and make the attempt because there's nothing worse than getting older and not trying something and to sit back and regret. Then, then it can become bitter. Then, then there's people. And, and I've met people that have been that way and they say, I had a chance to do that, but I never did. And it's because of this, it's because of this. And I'd always say, Really, when it comes down to it, it's because of one person. Look in the mirror. You're, you're the only one really in control of your life. So, so do it. All the young musicians out there, get your dream, put it together, live it, and go get it. And don't come up with excuses why it can't happen. There's no excuse. Uh -uh. You go do it, and you do what you got to do to get there. And never be afraid to ask people for advice. Never be afraid to ask. Because I've always learned, LJ, the best thing, best advice I ever got from people was stuff of what not to do. 
don't be like that person. And some of that I've always tucked in the back of my mind. I will never be like that person. I'll never do this to a, to a fan, to anything. And, and I've, I've, I've seen, I've seen people shoot to the top so fast. And when they get there, their attitude changed with them. And they started treating people differently. It's almost like they believed in all the hype. And, I, and I, I'm a firm believer in, you know, when, when I met people like Charlie Pride, Charlie Daniels, all of these guys, you know, Merle Haggard, Buck Owens. And when you'd meet these guys and you're talking to them one-on-one, -on -one, man, it's just like talking to anybody. They're, they're so humble and so honored just to be doing what they're doing, but they didn't have to be. But some of the ones that were up and coming and got there too fast, they had the attitude. And sometimes that, that's the best thing. Don't do that. It's, that's awesome advice. Donnie, you're so uh, generous with the information you share with your um with your fellow musicians and your fellow artists. Um, I noticed uh, that a lot of your music students are starting to start their own uh, music careers themselves and they're starting to put their names out there. I mean, I've seen uh, like uh, Josh Stump and uh, Mercy Glover and uh, uh, Taylor Bell. I mean, they're just making, starting to make waves in our uh, little small community of Prince Albert. Um, what does it mean to you when you see artists that you've supported start getting their names out there and start working is that must be a really special feeling for you as a music teacher. The same feeling LJ that I, that I get is the same feeling that people who have helped me along the way. Well, when, whenever I talk with Brian Sklar, I'll talk with Freddie Pelshare, I'll talk with George Piston, who's a fellow fiddle player who showed me a lot when I first started and they seen what I did with my music. I feel the same way with them and with them, because to me, I always tell, and I've told all three of them this, you are more than my students. You're, you've become my friends. Josh has become my friend. Mercy's become my friend. And, and what, I, what I try to give them, I give them that little extra. I give them that much more. And I always tell them, but it's, they trust me enough to come back and say, I have this opportunity to do this. What would you do or what would you advise? And I'll tell them and I'll be honest. Be careful of this. Do this. Do this. Yeah, that, that that's a great thing, and and it's like anything. You have to know, you have to know when to say when, and and, and just just leave it at that. You know, just um, when 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 do I make that mark where I finally realize that okay, they really want me to come. They want me to do this. I I I, I have I have to start commanding this in in order to make that happen. If that makes any sense to anybody, hope it does. No, it, that makes complete sense. I mean, um, I, I think there's such an, a thing as uh, oversaturation, especially in small uh, in small mu competitive music markets. I mean, there is such a thing as uh, maybe accepting one too many things. I completely agree. Yeah, they, 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 I think back in the day, there was a, a fun little word we learned as musicians. It's called exposure. Yeah. We used to always get told that when we first started. And like anybody, when you're up and coming and, well, come on over, you know, they, they'd always they'd always invite you to come over. And, you know, all the up and comers that are coming, trust me, if you haven't done it yet, you're going to gain a lot of friends, the better you get at your craft. And the next thing you know, if you start getting those phone calls that say, hey, what are you doing this Saturday? Come on over to the house. We're having a get together. But don't forget your guitar. Then I always turned around and I would tell them a little piece of advice back and say, I'll bring my car. I need you to check the carburetor for me. Well, I come do that then. <laughs> Or find out what they do for a living and just put them on the spot and bring it there. Because a lot of people, they, they realize, they kind of think this is, turns into just a hobby. And it's just for fun that you do that. And yet they, I, I don't think a lot of people realize that when you really get serious at it, it is your living. It is what you do for a living. And, and trust me, a mechanic don't want to show up at a house party with his toolbox. Unless you really want to. <laughs> But I'm sure you'll have a lot of extra friends, too, if you're a mechanic that wants to do that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, uh, like you said, you've been uh, making a living off music for a long time. When was the moment and what did it feel like in that moment when you kind of thought to yourself, I I've made it. I I'm here. I've arrived. This is uh, this is it. Honestly, LJ, I would have to say that when my first show that I went down and I played with Neil McCoy, there, there's two moments that really hit. And I just said, this is it. I know I've done everything I wanted to do. 
that was the first moment because it was my dream to play with an artist from the United States. And my first show that I played in the United States was, the, it was, uh, gosh, I think it was a, a Tuesday night or a Wednesday night in a bar. But just the, the electricity that was in that room when we played, I did not want to stop playing. What's, what, what ended up being a two-hour show flew by to me in like two minutes. I was done. And so that, that feeling and that emotion that I, I couldn't believe it. It was it, my, my dream came true. And the second one was the very first time we walked on the Grand Ole Opry stage to play. And Neil stopped the show and we all stood in the middle. There was a, a piece of wood. It's a circle that they actually took out of the old original Ryman Auditorium. And that piece of wood is where Hank Williams Sr. used to stand. Ray Price, Charlie Bride, Buck Owens, Merle Haggard, you name it, all the way back, Furlan Husky, uh, Hank Snow, uh, so many, Patsy Klein. And as you stand in that circle, Neil stood all of us in that circle. And everyone started taking pictures of us. And we looked up and all I didn't know what to do. But there, there was me and another fellow Canadian, Sean Carson, who I actually started with. We both started playing music together. I was 19. He was 18. And we stood in that circle and we cried. Because it just, that's, LJ, that's the moment I knew that there's no turning back. There's no turning back. But where do you go from there? So this was the piece of advice my mom gave me. I remember calling my mom that night and I said, mom, every dream I've ever had in my life come true tonight. Now, what do I do? Because my dad had passed the, you know, the year before. And she said, go out, make up new dreams and go get them. Don't stop with just one. So there, you know, I pass that advice on to the young up, up and comers. Like, don't just stop with one. You know, if you can get that one dream, go get it. Good. Move on and keep going. Never stop. Just, just keep doing it. No, that's awesome advice. And I honestly, I see you living that because the longevity of your career is just so uh, inspiring. And it's so cool to see you still making music. I mean, you have your single right now, uh, Time Off for Bad Behavior. And it's just fun, just country, uh, good time rock song. And uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that, your current song? That, that song uh, started because uh, I think it was last year, my, our daughter, Juliana, who just turned 13, she got hooked on uh, Motley Crue and she started watching and, and, and listening to a lot of the 80s style music, which which I absolutely love. For me, it's kind of funny because when I'm when I'm in the truck or driving around listening to music, it's either 70s rock or it's 80s rock. People say, don't you listen to country? Don't you listen to fiddle music? No, that's what I like listening to when I'm driving. So she got adapted to that and learned all of that material. And then she gets hooked on Motley Crue. Then all of a sudden the T-shirts came out. And my brother-in-law brought back some T-shirts from Edmonton of Ozzy Osbourne, Motley Crue, all of this stuff. So when I seen her wearing that going to school a couple of times, that's where the line came. There was one line in there. Teacher didn't like my T-shirt. Guess they're not a fan of Motley Crue. So, and, uh, but, but the whole thing was nothing more than a twist on we, we thought about this, this kid in school that gets in trouble, but he doesn't go home. So he, he gets time off for bad behavior. So guess what? I'm going to go out and have the time of my life then. This is what I'm going to do. Yeah, so that, that's where the whole idea come from. But I wrote that with a buddy of mine in, uh, in Ontario, Terry, Terry Fernal. Oh. Yeah, so Terry and I wrote that together. And he's a fantastic songwriter. Awesome. Yeah, no, it's, it's so good to hear new music. What's next for you, Donnie? I have another single coming out. I'm just about to go in and track the, uh, the vocal part. And uh, playing a lot of live shows, and thank God for that, where we're starting to get out there and play a lot more. And it's so nice. We actually just finished LJ a show in um, uh, Candle Lake, myself and Marty Grambo and Darlene Toledo. We've always wanted to do this show. It's a classic, kind of a tribute to classic country, but the way we do it and the way the, the music we grew up on. And we put that together, and it's just the, you know, it was almost a sold out crowd in at Candle Lake. And then when we by the time we were done, we played a two hour show and we kept asking people when they were leaving. Was that too long? I said, are you kidding me? That wasn't long enough. We, we, we could have gave them a three hour show and they would have sat through it because it's just I think what it is, is people starve for that kind of music. They're really starving for that style of music and they love it because it was such an impact when it was up. And to me, and I'll give you another example. That's why, to me, Garth Brooks, when he comes back out and puts on shows, he does so well. On top of him being a fantastic performer and entertainer. But it's his music. The 90s. 
People want to go back to that because they're, they're not they're not really digging too much of what's happening today. So they want to go back to that genre. And that's why George Strait will never die. His style of music. And like if anybody says who's the king of country music, it's George Strait. Sorry, Garth Brooks, go away. <laughs> it's George Strait. Because you, I look at who did Garth learn from? Ask him. He learned from George Strait. So that's who that's who I like going back to. I like listening to those guys and just just figuring it out. And you talk about longevity. That guy's been around. He's been around past all of them, you know. And it's just, but that that's that's what it is. Awesome. Yeah, I know. I I agree. <laughs> I wonder if we're gonna get any controversy of uh, <laughs> saying who the king of country music. Is. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd love somebody put it to the test get out there Let, let's see but i'll tell you what when you're doing that folks uh compare the number one hits that uh a guy like george Strait had with anybody put anybody on the market number one hits and you can put anybody on the market and nobody comes close to george Strait. i've been asking uh the artists in this interview series donnie uh an, another indigenous artist that they'd recommend for listeners to uh to search up and listen to, who would you pick from a Saskatchewan there, Indigenous artists? There is so many, so many artists, and there's, there's not just one. I can't just pick one. I mean, you of all people, yes, look look yourself up. I mean, this, you, you know, no, I'm not saying you look yourself up, but anybody listening to me, you need to check out LJ because the thing is, the way he writes, the way he sings, it's a different. It, it, it's a it's it's a sound of his own. You you have a sound of your own, and you have a style of your own, and it's really really cool. And I'm proud of you. I'm very proud of you for what what you've accomplished and how you write and how you present yourself when you're on stage. It's awesome. So, but but there's so many. There's so many. Jared Potras out there. He, he he's doing really well. Uh, there's uh, oh man, there's Conrad Big Knife who's still going at it. And still doing it. And I remember, I remember back in the day when I first, uh, they didn't call it Indigenous Award. They called it the Aboriginal Award back at the Saskatchewan Country Music Awards. And Doyle, uh, Doyle Ironstand, good friend of mine, he, he was one of the first recipients of that award when, it, when they first started handing it out and doing this. And that's the thing. And, and, and I found that with that award in particular, taking that was one heck of an honor. And it was great. But to take it to the next level, when you can say uh, to be nominated for a Juno Award in the Aboriginal category at that time, as I said, it was called Aboriginal, uh, to be nominated three times in that category. And every time LJ, I'd go there and I had the opportunity once uh, to speak with the person that started the Junos. And I can remember going to him because there was a big controversy that year that I was nominated, that there wasn't enough uh, traditional indigenous and, and Aboriginal music, that the tradition like the powwow, uh, the throat singers, the Inuit, there wasn't enough of that. Why are they going after the country artists that are indigenous? And that's, that was the thing. So my suggestion to them, even back then, you need to add more awards. I said, why are why is this genre of music only given one? When you have so many different jazz categories, you got folk categories, you have different country music categories, you have rock categories that are so many different branched off from there. But then when it comes to the indigenous people who have been here since day one, you're going to nominate them for one? Come on. And I looked at him and that's exactly what I said, LJ. And, I, and he looked at me and he said, you're right. We really need to reconsider and do something. And I said, I really hope you do. And if you want to reach out, reach out. Well, by God, finally, it took him 12 years, I think. It was the, that conversation that I had to now, where now they finally have two. They have two Indigenous awards now for the uh, Juno Awards. And one is for the traditional. Traditional. And one is for the contemporary for today's market, which is good because that's how you get there. You know, another piece of advice I'll give people, squeaky wheel always gets the oil. Remember that saying, because if you don't say nothing and you sit back and keep letting them plow over top of you, voice your opinion. But how you voice your opinion is it also matters. Be delicate how you voice your opinion. Try not to be too aggressive. And that's why with me, 
when I was younger, I was very, very passionate at what I did. And I knew what I wanted. And sometimes that would come across a little aggressive. And I learned that the older I got, I realized I'm going, no, oh, no, 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 just calm down. Calm down and relax and think about what you say before you say it. And I think everyone learns that. It's a learning curve, you know, but, but I'm very proud of what's happening, especially like in Saskatchewan with the Indigenous music. Uh, how many people are coming out and, and just get, getting that opportunity to get out there and perform and represent and do it really, really well. And that's what I'm proud of. Proud to see that. Awesome, Donnie. Thank you so much. You've been so generous with your time today and uh, so generous with the information you share to, to all of us uh, artists in Saskatchewan. And I got to say just personally how much I look up to you and uh, especially also being from Prince Albert, like it, it means a lot to, to, to see how your career has gone and to kind of, you know, be able to reach out to you and ask for advice. It means a lot to us artists. So thank you so much. And uh, where can people find you on social medias? Just, just look up on Facebook. You know, I'm on Facebook or look me up on my website is uh, donnieperantomusic.com. And, uh, or if you're in PA, I'm in the phone book, but my address ain't there. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Thank you so much, Donnie. I appreciate it. LJ, thanks, man. Stay tuned. I'm a gone.